Hi, I'm Stephen Hamp from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the Pharaohs 2 recurve bow. Now this is really exciting to open. And why is it exciting? Because of the packaging. Look at this box. It's black and the writing is just awesome. It looks, it looks like a Hoyt, doesn't it? Now when you see packaging of this quality, all you think of is Hoyt and you think of the RX-1 compound bow. Now you're thinking of a $2,000 bow or a $2,300 bow. And this box here is just absolutely awesome. And look at the quality of this box. I mean, it's better than the RX-1 box. And all Hoyt, shoot, all, all Hoyt shooters are gonna say, no, the RX-1 box is much better. But no, this is really thick. It's a very high quality box. And, um, and it's black. Now let's look what's inside this box. So, it's a recurve and it's got foam and the foam's all cut out to fit the bow in into it and it looks absolutely fanta fantastic now this foam is a high quality foam it's not the cheap stuff that you can just rip apart with your fingers this is this is the foam that you shoot arrows into um, basically it's um, all being laser cut out to fit the bow in and it's very high quality it looks just absolutely awesome so the grip the riser this is 21 inches and it comes in three sizes this is the 21 inch version and it comes in a 19 and a 17 inch version it's got sight holes on the side here so you can fit a sight to it international fitting limbs so you can wind it up or down in poundage you've got adjustments left or right to adjust the limbs left to right um, you can shoot it either off the shelf. You can see it's got the nice curve there and the nice curve there for shooting off the shelf, which is just perfect for someone who wants to shoot traditional. The wood grip is, it's not a high wood grip. It's more, it's like a target grip, um, but quite low there. Um, it feels nice. I was gonna say it's got a piece. I've got no idea what that screw holes for. I was gonna say for it's for a two piece quiver, but there's not one at the top, so. Is it to add weights maybe down the bottom here if you're going to shoot bare bow? Now this is a machined riser, so not cast, this is machined. Um, you can see it's actually quite, the finish of it is actually quite nice. It's all flat here. Um, curve there, like the top of the line target, target bows. Now to adjust the panage on this bow, as in all international fitting limbs, you've got an allen key there you have to loosen off and then you wind this in or out now if you wind it in or out too so you wind it out too much you're going to strip the bolt so just be careful with how much you wind it out now the kit comes with the little um, hair so you stick the hair on here it makes the arrow run smooth and obviously you run the hair in the direction where the arrow is flying not against the arrow it comes with a stick on flipper rest that's if you're going to shoot off without this plate here so you'd remove that and it's just got an allen key there to hold the plate in place it's got a screw on rs if you're going to shoot without this so you want to shoot through where the hole is that's really clever comes with all the allen keys it comes with bowstring and the little um, things to tie on the string silencers now what's this kit missing? It's missing a bowstring, and I think that is a, what I'm gonna say, a letdown. It should come with a bowstringer, because, I'm just gonna take this apart. There's clearly spots there where you could actually put a bowstringer in. Bowstringers aren't that expensive, so this kit would be much nicer with a, um, with a bowstringer. Now, the bow comes in black. You don't have the option for camo. Um, it would be nice if it came in a camo option and maybe I should have ordered it in camo. Um, but the black kind of, like the black wolf and these international fitting limb hunting bows we're gonna compare it with. Um, the black wolf comes in black or camo and I'm gonna say 99% of the black wolves I've ever sold are in black. I don't think I've ever sold a camo. So black is the in color. The limbs. 
Now there's the limb there. Now you'll notice there's a fair bit of reflex on this limb here. It's almost 90 degrees, so this limb is going to shoot quite quick. Um, the quality of the limb, the limb tips, kind of narrow, which is good. Means they've reduced the weight down here. It's it feels like a good. It looks nicely finished all over. Now these limbs either come in black or with the see-through um, glass. Now I chose black because I just thought it went better with the whole black theme. So what does this bow compete with in the market and what price point is this is the Pharaoh's going to, bow going to be at in the price point in the market? Now we're talking Australian dollars here. Um, this is a hunting bow aimed at the bare bow archer, maybe someone who wants to shoot sights. I think this bow is going to be priced at around $380 mark in the Australian marketplace. And people say, well, you know, that bow's gone up or down in price. It depends what the Australian dollar is. At the moment, our Australian dollar compared to the US dollar is at around 68 cents. So, so it depends what you're pricing. I price this bow at 68 cents. Um, so if the Australian dollar picks up, so it goes up to 70 cents, 72 cents, you'll see this bow drop in price. But now let's go and compare what this competes with in the marketplace. Now the first thing you're going to say is, Stephen, why are you looking at this new bow? Because someone did a review on this product and said it was really good and it was better than the $1,000 recurve. So I was like, oh, let's have a look. So the first bows I want to compare, compare this, uh, the Pharaohs to, is going to be the Samic Discovery. Um, now, I'm no longer selling Samic. Um, and you're going to say, you're not selling Samic? Didn't you just add Samic? Yeah, I did add Samic, and then Samic decided to sell to other shops in Australia, and I was like, well, you said you were going to supply to me after I placed a big order, and you reneged on that. So, see you later. This is the Discovery. Um, similar sort of bow, machine riser, um, with international fitting limbs, black limbs, wood grip. So to me, this is very, very similar. Price point on this bow is 300 for the riser, machine riser, 200 on the limbs. So we're talking about $500 versus the 300 on the Pharaohs. But there are some, some differences about this bow. One, it doesn't come in a pretty black box. And you say, well, what's the thing with the pretty black box? It is nice to ship and it's nice to store the product in. So you, do, you don't need a case for it because that box is like very high quality box but to shoot this bow off the shelf now it's curved here but there's nothing there to shoot off the shelf so you can see this one I've got here like I've got a center rest on here so this center rest is 45 and then I'm not shooting off the shelf so the, with the discovery you don't really have that thing to shoot off the shelf unless I've forgotten since I did the review and it comes with something but I don't think it does um, now this does come in all different colors and I think from my memory of shooting this bow I think it shot very nice. But like I said the review I saw of this bow someone said this shot the best of all the bows so I was like oh well let's have a look at it. So that's the Samic Discovery and that was really really popular with international fitting limbs. Now I can't remember the name of this I think it's the I don't know I don't know what this is a 261 266 um, international fitting uh, limbs comes in <laughs> camo black or tan um, this I think is a 64 66 inch bow international fitting limbs nice bow price point on this is probably 260 um, complete now it does have the ability to shoot off the shelf um, plastic grip versus the wood grip the balance it's top heavy it's more like a target bow um, nice bow for the price international fitting limbs nice bow for the price but um, I'm going to say not as nice as the Pharaohs now this one's interesting I think this is the two I know it's a Jung Sing 261 or 266 or 271 or something. I think price point on this is now it's a com 
direct competitor to the Pharaohs. Okay, it's a direct competitor. The wood grip, the wood grip feels very almost the same, but this is a cast riser. Same limbs. These are the limbs. If you go for clear, you can go for this is what the clear one looks like, and this bow is available in the black. I think the price point on this bow is around 260. I think 260. Where the other bow is machine riser with the nice box, obviously. Um, now this doesn't have the ability to shoot off the shelf like the other one has. It doesn't come with a little plate. So now that little plate's probably not that expensive, but just makes the whole bow. It's just everything's there except for the bowstring. So. I can't actually remember shooting this bow, maybe I haven't done a review on this one yet. But to me, this just doesn't look as good um, if we're just talking about looks of the bow, but at 260, I mean, obviously it's cheap. Um, now I would grab a Black Wolf, a Samic, a uh, uh, Win and Win Black Wolf, which is here. Now this is the Black Wolf from Win and Win Carbon Riser. I think it's a 19 inch carbon riser, carbon limbs, they're a carbon wood limb. Um, price point on this, I'm gonna guess $1,000. Um, nice bow, they've been very popular. I saw these all around the world. The grip's narrower um, than the Pharaohs. To start off with it's more like a it's more like the top of the line target grip um, high quality bow um, I saw the review this review I saw on this said that that bow shoots better than this bow so I'm gonna be interested to see what I think of that bow um, but the black wolf thousand dollars so we're comparing a thousand dollar bow to a um, 380 I think dollar bow I think that's the majority of the bows I want to compare it to as far as hunting international fitting limb bows on the market today. Now the other one which I've forgotten about is the T-Bow, so let's just show you that. So this is the T-Bow, um, international fitting limbs, wood grip, you can shoot it off the, off the plates which is nice. This you can actually adjust the plates left and right. Um, this is a nice bow. The limbs don't, see the limbs don't have as much, I don't think the limbs are, I don't think they're as, it's got as much reflex on them. So I just want to grab, so let's just put them up against one another. So I think it's just the shape of the bow. Because the, the, <laughs> these ones looked very much like they were a big amount of reflex. So I think this was just based on the angle of the limb in the bow. But um, let's set this bow up and have a shot. Um, so that's the T-Bow. T-Bow I really like. I've shot this. Um, I think price point on the T-Bow is around 380 So similar price point to the Pharaohs. Um, wood grip very similar bow so it's going to be interesting to see how this bow compares to the t-bow as far as shootability um t-bow doesn't have the nice case that this one has um whether that's a problem so let's set this up and have a shot okay so the pharaohs the limbs come with these little things these are just um to stop this bumping into stuff um so you don't really need this this is just for transportation and if you're storing them in the foam case, you don't really need them. All the international fitting limbs generally come with them. So those little things there. Now the question you're going to ask, is there a difference between the top limb and bottom limb? And I, as far as I'm concerned, the answer is no. Um, some people say one limb's got one pound more pressure than the other limb. Look, I don't know. I, I've swapped limbs backwards up to down and it hasn't affected any of my sight settings. So. I would suspect if one limb was stronger than the other, swapping limbs from top to bottom would make a difference, maybe. I don't know. It didn't make any difference to me. Um, anyway, they are marked upper and lower. So I suppose we'll put them in upper and lower. 
there's no branding on the thing and on this here you'll see the writing's in the same direction so one's going to be up and one's going to be down which the riser's got a bit of weight in it so lower so how these clip in they just clip in like that they clip in nice and easy no one clip just like that some international fitting limbs are actually hard to get in to start with they're really quite a stiff fit that's easy easy out um, now with this bow I definitely get a bow stringer like I wouldn't string this around my leg I never suggest stringing bows around your leg um, but with this if you're stringing this around your leg you run the risk of pulling this limb out with your hand and then you break this thing here now I've definitely had one guy do that with a target recurve um, where he's stringing it and then pulls the limb out and then he breaks this thing in here so use a bow stringer they, they don't cost much and maybe I should be including them when I bought when I um, sell these so the kit now with the string how do you work out what's the top of the string and what's the bottom of the string? So here, the two loops. So I'm going to try and zoom in. See this loop here is bigger than this? See how the loop's smaller? This is a small loop. This goes at the bottom. This one here, the big loop, goes at the top. So the top, the big loop, goes over the limb and it slides down the limb like so. And that's why it's, that's why it's big. The little one just goes down the bottom and it just clips straight onto that bottom thing. Now I'm going to grab a bow stringer and I'm going to show you how to use a bow stringer. I'm not stringing this bow around my leg. Um, I probably could, but like I said, I don't. 90% of uh, limb failures I see are through people stringing around the leg. So even though a guy does it at your club and he says, well, I've done it this way from my life. Look, I own an archery shop. I'm not saying I'm the, you know, the thing of wealth of all knowledge. But I'm going to say 95% of people who break limbs on recurves are done stringing around their legs and they've been doing it for years. And they basically twist the limb while they're twisting it either through doing this or around the bottom of the limb. So just buy a, buy a bow stringer and you won't break your bow. It costs you $10. Um, buy a stringer, don't break your bow and everyone's happy. Okay, so this is the bow stringer I recommend. This is a called a tip to tip bow stringer. <coughs> I don't know why I've got all knots in them, but so you've got a big one and a little one. The little one goes up the top, the big one goes down the bottom. And they just go over the limb tip like so. Now you can see with the little one going to the top, that's so you can slide it up the limb. The big one goes down the bottom because it covers the complete string, like so. Now I'm going to stand on this. I'm going to stand on this, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So we stand on the bow stringer, like so, and we just lift it. I'm hoping that's in. And then you let it down slowly. Now when you get back, always check it from the back to make sure it's on and running down the center. Same down the bottom, make sure it's on from this side and running it down the center. Now you don't ever want to check it from this side because if it's, you don't want to hit, check it from this side because if it's not on it's going to hit you in the eye. Um, so that's the bow strung. This is a 45 pound bow. So now I always, before I always shoot the shot, I always draw it back to make sure it's all on and there's no creaks. So the draw cycle of this, um, 45 pounds. Now I haven't been shooting recurve much lately, so let's um, balance the bow. Slightly top heavy, but not like the two, is it the 261 or 266? Not heavy like that, but it's definitely top heavy. I think the T-Bow has better balance than this. Um, I can't remember the Black Wolf balance. I should probably grab that. 
Um, I can't remember the discovery, but it's this is flexing back. Feels nice and light. The grip feels nice. Now the pull, the limbs on this feel good quality. Um, we're going to talk about stacking. Stacking is when it starts to build up poundage, like a lot as you start drawing it. All recurve bows are measured at 28 inches, so this bow will be 45 pounds at 28. So if you draw back 29 inches, you'll be probably drawing back 48 pounds, 49 pounds. If you draw back 27, you're probably drawing back about 42 pounds. So to me, it feels good. I'm feeling like it's starting to stack around here. So at about 30 inches, these limbs are like that's could be my strength factor, but about 30 inches feeling like about 50 pounds. So I wouldn't want to be drawing this bow at over 50, at over 30 inches, because um, I just feel that's it's getting pretty heavy at the back there, about 31 or 30 odd inches. So let's go and have a shot and see how this thing feels. But it looks, I think it looks nice. I think it's a nice looking, I think it's a nice looking bow. Um, is it better than the Tebow? Is it better than the Discovery? Let's go and have a shot and see what you think and see what I think this bow, how it feels. Okay, now when you're shooting a recurve bow, and especially traditional, you know, off the shelf, it's really important to have the, the spine of the arrows correct. Because when you shoot this arrow, it needs to move away from the bow. These arrows need to flex around the bow, um, so it clears it. If the arrow is too stiff for this bow, the arrow will be stuck on here for longer than it needs to be okay so you just get more wear now these these are feathered arrows you can see i'm missing one but these are feathered arrows so if it strikes on the way through it's not not really going to matter now if you're shooting a bow which is off the shelf like this you need feathers because plastic veins as soon as it hits that shelf is going to cause it to kick up feathers are more forgiving to shoot they straighten up quicker and for off the shelf it just caves away now you should really fit knocking points to this whether you tie it on or fit metal ones i don't really care i'm just doing this video quick i just want to have a feel what the shock's like um the strings the arrows the string's good it, like the arrows are kind of clipping on clipping off they do slide up um but that's to me that's pretty pretty normal um i like that I like the little, this little plate here that holds the arrow nicely. Let's have a shot. Oh, so now these arrows, the spine of these arrows is not correct for this bow, but it will shoot because it's straight down the center. So it will shoot, but it'll just create a little bit more friction than needs to be, be a little bit slower. And these are cheap carbon arrows. These we sell for $8 each um, with feathers. So the equivalent if i was to buy the equivalent gold tip arrow um with feathers i think they're about twice the price um so it just depends on your budget that's pretty good um There's no silences on this. I think it's pretty quiet. Um, I think it's pretty quiet. I'm getting no slap on the arm at all. I mean, I do have a jumper on. And so I could be hitting that. I'll just take the jumper off. So generally, if you're buying a recurve, you should probably get an arm guard, whether it's traditional or what. You should get definitely finger protection and I'd recommend a glove for this type of bow. Um, the gloves, a good glove's going to see you back around $20. But this feels nice. I don't feel any vibration in the bow at all. Um, the grip feels comfortable. Um, how's it going to compare with the other recurves I've shot? Now, other recurves I own, um, so let's just say where, I, where I'm at, so where I'm basing it from, the Predator recurve. The Predator Velocity I am. The Predator Velocity is, to me, one of the top of the line recurve hunting bows on the market. Metal riser, a unique grip, great limbs, 
price point probably twelve hundred dollars the rises seven eight eight hundred and I like Predator. Predator is for someone who really wants high quality I'm more of a meat and potato guy and I love the people at Predator so don't don't think I'm trashing Predator and I kind of feel like I am this bow to me feels great to shoot and I'm struggling to feel the difference between this and the Predator but the Predator is clearly a it's a high quality it's like to me it's like driving a race car versus your normal standard car they probably do similar speeds so you could talking this much difference but this difference in price and that's what I kind of feel this is you know this is this is a this feels to me to be a quality product the speeds feel good and I'm almost wondering if these are bamboo limbs because um, this company actually produces bamboo limbs which are actually faster than the maple limbs and they do both limbs um, and I was talking the other day and they said it's their bamboos the the premium product where the maple limb is slower which I thought was interesting it's quiet and there's just no vibration at all this is really nice now like I said someone did a review on this and they said this bow shoots better than the black wolf the riser weighs more than the black wolf I think the black wolf makes more noise than this bow now it could be because it's a carbon riser versus a machine riser and machine riser's got more more mass I'm not sure but to me it definitely feels quieter the limbs actually feel really good it feels really really good like it feels really good really really good I say that a lot of my reviews because <laughs> both are becoming so good I had a person ring up and they said oh I'm interested in the Martin Panther um, I think I saw that bow for 400 not international fitting limbs just a screw in limb those limbs are not high quality um, and Martin's gonna hate me for saying that the riser's average is a cast riser and it's 400 this is a machine riser the limbs are better it's international fitting limbs adjustability but it, wood grip but it's not even that this thing shoots so much better it's like the vibration you know back in the day when we used to shoot the panther and that you know the, that bow's going back 20 years you used to think oh this bow's all right not as good as the damon howard hunter that i used to own like it's not in that ballpark but i tell you what this bow is this bow is as good as it's pretty much as good as any recurve and i've got some predators just behind me there that i own they are beautiful beautiful bits of artwork and they shoot lovely and i've had those for maybe 20 maybe 20 years maybe longer maybe 25 years will i have this in 25 years i don't know but this is a beautiful bow and i'm going to tell you like if you do have a problem with these limbs they international fitting limbs just stick another one in you can fit carbon ones you can fit foam ones you can fit foam carbon ones in and you're back in business I mean, today I had a phone call from a guy going, "Can you, can I, can I buy some limbs for my God? What's the name of the bow? I'm going to call it Rabbit, Rabbit Eye Bow." I was like, "What's that? I've never heard of it." He goes, "Oh, I brought it on eBay or something." I was like, "I've got no idea what it is. So how can I tell you if I've got limbs that suit it?" He goes, "Well, the person I brought it from said like they they don't have limbs for it." I'm like, "Well, I mean, probably fits." But these are international fitting limbs, which means any international fitting limb will fit into it. And that's what I love about international fitting limbs. It goes together quick. So if you're a hunter and you put this in your backpack, they go together quick. Um, if you want to pack it up and put it back in that pretty black box, it's just so quick, so easy. Look, love it. Love it. It's quiet. Would I fit the would I fit the cat's whiskers? Probably, but I don't think I need to. You can fit little rubber things under here to, to take the noise out again, but this all feels feels great. Like it feels really, really good. 
These are another cheap carbon arrow. This is a wood look finished carbon arrow. These are only three inch feathers. I prefer fours. Um, now look, that those knocks, and now knocks are meant to be the same size. See, this this one doesn't slip up the string. Still quiet. It's good. This is a good bow. This is the Pharaohs too. Um, bow about 380 I'm gonna guess black limbs I think it looks awesome I think this is a I think this is this is a good bow uh, I don't know how it's gonna last as far as longevity I know these limbs are made these limbs they make for lots of companies um, their customer service is wonderful um, Jung Sing their customer service is great um, this is a good bow, absolutely good bow. So if you're going to shoot bare bow, this is a good bow. If you're going to shoot just instinctive hunting, this is a good bow. You can fit a bow quiver on there, you can fit a sight on there. I'm not sure what this little hole is here, it's threaded. It's got a matching one down there. Maybe that's for a two-piece quiver. I don't know which quiver fits into this hole here, and I will ask. Probably it's something I should have found out before this video, but this is a really nice finished product. I think it looks, I love the machining of it. I think it just looks great. I just, and it shoots better. I just want to go, my mum, if you haven't been watching the channel, my mum owns an archery range and it's like archery golf. You just walk around, there's animal targets and you, sh and you shoot from target to target. It's just a, like a walk in the park, so to speak. This is the type of bow I want to take to somewhere like that. Just no stress. I don't have to worry where the arrows go. It's just go and have fun. This is awesome. Now this bow is available in 30 to 60 pounds. Um, this is awesome. Like a really good, really good. Really good bow that I'm enjoying shooting. Um, and look. Yeah, I, someone once said you didn't, your release is bad or something. I'm just having fun. I'm not even that sort of worried about stuff here. I'm just twanging arrows down there. It feels great. I'm just hurting my fingers a bit. But now I'm going to show you the rest after I've shot. You can see the little marks. That's where the arrow is sort of rubbing over it. But it's not bad for what I've shot. Now there should normally be hair over this rest. But this is 45 pounds. It's to me that feels as fast as any bow I've shot. Um, it's as good as any bow I've ever shot. It's a good thing. So the guy who did the review who said this is as good as the Black Wolf. Um, he prefers shooting over the Black Wolf. Maybe. The Black Wolf is a carbon riser and like it's premium product at a thousand. This is, I don't know, it just looks, kind of looks like a plane wing the way they've designed this here where it's thin here then goes thick and then goes thin at the front. I don't know if you can see that if it's showing up well on the video but it's just, I really like it. It's a, I like this more than I would thought. Now the other one I showed you with the cast riser, I just don't like the look of it. I, like the bow's all right. I'm not saying it's bad bow. This to me just feels good. The, just the vibration is absorbed. It's clearly to me, it's clearly worth spending the extra, what is it, $120, $130? This is clearly worth spending the extra $130, $120 on. It's a superior product. Um, very, very nice bow to shoot. So if you get a chance and you're in the market for a, hunting recurve, um, recreational recurve um, to shoot. Now this is not a bow you're going to shoot, it's got a stabilizer, you can fit to it. This is not a bow that you're going to shoot Olympic archery with because the sight window here is too short. This is, you know, maybe you fit a hunting sight to it, maybe you just shoot it without sights. This gives you options and I just think this is, this is a good, well presented, product 
Okay, so things I don't like about this bow. Let's go to there. Okay, so what don't I like about the Pharaohs? I don't like this. I've got no idea what this says. Now my son, who's a boy genius, who learnt uh, Chinese, could tell me what this says. I have no idea. It says you're a VIP, I don't know what that means. Um, but I don't, look, I don't even know why, why that's in there. Um, after sales service guarantee. Watch the fine print on the back. I don't know what that means. So, this is the manual for it. Now, I don't know if this is good or bad, so let's open it up. Okay, so maybe this is built for the Chinese market. Because um, I don't understand any of that. And now my eyesight's bad. Um, I know my eyesight's going with age. Um, this explains the D loops, but it's all in Chinese. The bowstringer, obviously be nice if it came with the bowstringer because you're there pictured a bowstringer. Uh, it gives you, shows you your options there on um, which arrow rest. Now if you're going to fit the flipper rest here, that in that diagram, you need a plunger button. Never shoot this arrow rest here without the plunger button because you're just going to break it. And then you're going to say, oh this arrow rest is broken, I need a warranty. You cannot shoot that product without a plunger button um, because the arrow is going to strike it on the way through and break it. The only one you can shoot, you can shoot the plastic one there without an arrow rest, without a plunger button, because obviously it's a built-in plunger button. You can shoot that there, obviously without a plunger button, but you cannot shoot the stick-on arrow rest without a plunger button. You need a plunger button. I don't understand that, it's in Chinese. But guess what, the rest of it's in English. No, it's not, it's just pictures. Pictures are good, people like seeing pictures. So this would be awesome. Awesome instruction manual if it was written in English for the English market, but maybe this bow was made for the Chinese market and I've just picked it up because someone said check this out. Um, so I don't know, but it would be nice if they had an English version and maybe they haven't sold enough of these in the English market. Um, and then people are going to say, well, what about German? Why don't you have a German instruction manual in German? Probably because I don't sell enough of them in Germany. Um, anyway, that's going to be my little thing on the bow. But overall, a really nice product. So the things I would like to see, English instruction manual and a bowstringer included. Um, I'd like to see those little rubber things. The little rubber things that fit on the back of the limbs included here. They're like a little self-adhesion thing. That, they're called a limb dampener or something and they bolt on the back here, they just stick on the back. I'd love to see those included. They're not very expensive. But overall, that is just an awesome product from Jung Sing, the Pharaohs 2. Check out your local archery store. Now, there's probably not gonna be a lot of them around because archery stores are generally not that big and they don't have lots of products. Um, and you don't sell many international fitting limb hunting recurves in your store, but I think this bow will sell. I really do. Having shot this bow, this is this is a bow people need to shoot because this is just awesome. And I think I will sell. I think I will sell a ton of these bows. So anyway, check out your local archery shop. Thanks for watching. And the more you shoot, the better you're going to shoot. The more muscles you'll build, the better your release will be. The better you'll build your back muscles, and I'll get the whole back thing happening. Yeah, and the more you'll enjoy it. The better you shoot, the more you'll enjoy it, the more work you put in, the more you'll enjoy it. And I'm just dribbling on here, but if you struggle it's and you succeed, you enjoy it much more than if you just had instant success because then you take it for granted. And shooting bare bow, shooting this bow is hard work. It's not like shooting a compound. This is hard work. And to shoot this thing well, you've got to be really, really good. And I'm not really, really good. But this is, if you're going to shoot this really, really well, that's amazing. But this to me, short distance, you know, under 20 meters is what I'd be shooting this at. And yeah, I'd take 50 meter shots, but that's just for fun. And I wouldn't be hunting at 50 meters with this. <coughs> hunting, I'd be at 10, 15 meters with this bow. 
Anyway, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies. Enjoy your archery. Thanks for watching. Bye.